Hello ladies and gents, it's good to have you back for another evergreen game. It's a game that is eternal, never gets old, and it's incredibly rich in positional ideas and tactics. So today's combatants are George Allen Thomas with white and Akiba Rubinstein with black. You might have heard of them or not. So we're talking about the first half of the 20th century and Akiba Rubinstein from Poland was an incredibly strong chess master that didn't have the chance to become world champion, some might say. So very, very strong GM from Poland. Okay, I think he's been uh, given the title in 1950. Anyway, the game that we're going to witness together, guys, is incredibly very useful, very illustrative, and you're going to appreciate this superb Spanish or Rui Lopez opening. So, we're going to do this right now. e4 and e5. Okay, knight f3 and knight to c6. Natural moves, theoretical approaches, nothing uh, complicated here. And a6. Now, George Allen Thomas uh, retreated the bishop to a4. Of course, there is a possibility for white. Just wanted to make it known to you people that bishop might take the knight. This is a possibility. Now, black also have two options taking either with b or with the d-pawn. Nothing wrong with none of these two approaches. Um, to make it a bit more clearer, if black takes on c6 with the d-pawn, white needs to be aware that if they getting a little bit greedy and taking on e5, now black would respond with queen to d4, attacking knight and attacking the pawn on e4. And now obviously you want to save the knight, you're going to jump on f3, queen's going to take on e4, checking the king, not the end of the world for the white, but the situation, the position would be better for black. So queen to e2, natural response here, queen takes and king captures. So now white cannot castle now one simple maneuvering might be making up for this positional disadvantage so to speak something like rook e1 and king dropping on f1 so that might be one way to pretend you've castled your king if you wanted to do it this way but then again positionally black is better than white here considered by the commentators and by the engines uh so let me just go back now because ju just wanted to tell you about that particular detail. And now if we take with black with the B pawn, and again, white needs to be aware. If the white knight takes on E5, now we got something either like E7 or G5. G5, what does bring new here? G5, queen to G5, attacks the knight and attacks G2. So that's more elements for more, more, more ideas for white to keep in mind. Now, Again, you kind of don't want to lose this guy, so if you consider playing knight to f3, queen's going to play on g2, attacking rook, rook moves over to g1, defending by the knight, knight is defended by the queen, queen is under attack, and you've got to play something like this. Okay, so you just need to be aware. So these are possibilities if you want to explore in depth these lines, feel free to search it and explore it, guys, using the archives and the engines. Now, let me go back to the game in itself, which they didn't do that. So George Allen Thomas didn't take on c6, but instead, after a6, he played bishop a4. Nothing wrong in this Morphe defense variation of the Rui Lopez. Knight f6, again, never forget, develop your pieces. Queen to e2 and b5, now attacking the bishop. Bishop goes very harmoniously on b3, and the first good move, great move considered by the engine, bishop to c5, which just in between ourselves is the perfect place for the bishop to be. You are attacking the f2. In principle, there's no point to playing defensively just bishop to d6 because you're sort of blocking the pawn on d7 to moving forwards. And there's no point to play bishop on e7 because, again, it's very defensive. So if you want to play an active Spanish with uh, black, go with the bishop to c5. Very good. c3 here, which might be preparing in the future some d4s. Castles, castles, both colors castle here. d6, freeing up the bishop. Yes, black might have the opportunity to also play bishop b7, and at some point given a chance the d5 to break through in the center. That's another idea. But what's been preferred here by Rubinstein is d6 move. 
d3 now this guy is ready to jump into the fray knight now repositioned itself to e7 obviously he wants to go on g6 creating more pressure more attacking power on the king side where the target actually is bishop g5 nice way to say to the black look uh i might be taking on f6 and giving you a bad pawn structure so you need to take a decision so bishop g uh knight to g6 knight to g6 had been played if bishop takes queen takes back not a problem whatsoever now white tries to pressurize a little bit here and playing knight to h4 rubinstein took bishop takes and h6 now the purpose on h6 now is very very clearly announcing that we actually want to push g5 attacking on the king's side with the pawns king has moved now king has played for various 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 reasons here one of them i'm just giving you an idea when the king moves obviously this pawn on f2 is no longer pinned and in the future it might be for white that they want to play something like f3 f4 so you don't want to have the king in a pin because this bishop on c5 is particularly quite threatening and very powerful need to be aware of uh g5 attacking the bishop goes to g3 king now goes to g7 which simply wants to enable the black rooks to circulate and to support a possible pawn's advancement on the h file knight to d2 queen to e7 now obviously with black you also need to move the queen up connect the two rooks and let them roam freely on the back ranks and also you need to figure out what to do with this guy on c8 the bishop on c8 bishop to c2 on long term is d4 were to be played at some point also this guy might be representing some ways of uh, taking that diagonal under its reign bishop to d7 and rook f to e1 rook to d to e8 and a4 trying to undermine this positional uh this structure this pawn structure on the queen side and perhaps infiltrate some rooks on the a file you never know rook to h8 now preparing guys as we've discussed preparing the pawns advancements uh takes on b5 takes on b5 knight goes on to f1 now probably there are ideas here probably white wants to consider this kind of moves you never know you never know h5 but that's a possibility but hey f3 he decided to play now f3 because what's coming next is simply h4 attacking this guy so you don't want to lose the bishop you need to create a little bit of a window escaping for that bishop and f2 just goes exactly at the right moment bishop f2 and at the same time white manages to neutralize the powerful and menacing bishop on c5 bishop takes queen takes and now we're starting to play a tactical game if at some point if until this moment the game was more positional and developing strategical ideas now the game will get incredibly tactic so that's brilliant about uh, Akiba Rubinstein is that he was also a positional and a great great tactician as you're gonna see guys some splendid moves out of the blue you were to say but it's just a phenomenal tactics played by Rubinstein knight to g4 attacking queen has got to move to f3 and now this is that particular moment when you need to do whatever possible to disrupt the white king defensive and what could be more brilliant than pawn to h3 fantastic move amazing move here if by any chance white blunders by taking you're simply gonna take with the rook you take with the rook and you attack the queen and if queen takes on h3 alas disaster the last blunder would be because knight comes on to f2 forking the king and the queen and pretty much the game's over here it's just done finished so for this reason white couldn't have taken on h3 but instead they push on g3 makes a lot of sense and queen to g5 supporting this uh bishop furthermore knight comes on to e3 wanting to challenge and get rid of the problematic knight now we get into the tactics rook to the a file you wouldn't do nothing on the e file obviously so you want to put the rook counter-attacking the other dangerous white rook on a1 knight now traded and bishop takes with tempo attacking the white queen they go on to f2 rook takes and rook takes and now guys i don't know i'm going to give you just a second here um to figure out what do you think is the most tactical tally-esque attacking aggressive move that black can play right 
at this very moment. Because now here comes the first brilliancy. I don't know if you've seen it. If not, I'm going to press the forward button on my keyboard here. Boom. Rook to a8. What a move. What a move. Trying to deflecting the white rook. And if this were to happen, disaster for white. Absolute disaster for white because of the queen to c1 check. And whatever white does is just to delay the checkmate. Let's say bishop d1, queen what to take. Now, what does white do? Resigns or prolong it painfully a bit longer to no avail really. Uh, what? Blocking. And then we've got bishop f3, checkmate. So that's one possible way. Not too many though. So it will be a terrible blunder for white to capture the super poisoned rook on a8. So b1 then. Another very tactical Beautiful idea here. If white were to capture, the black rook would simply move over to b8, attacking this guy mercilessly, which would be recaptured immediately, and then more pressure onto b2, the b file. So bishop plays now. You just need to be aware that there is a double attack here, but very elegantly and super efficiently played by Rubinstein f6. This is it. No more danger. No more problem. The connection between the queen and the bishop have been has been stopped right at this moment by playing f6. c4 now and f5. And now if you tell me, okay, uh, what if I just take with the pawn? That would be another disaster. Blunder because of the rook coming over to f8, attacking three times on f5. And this is incredibly problematic for white. They can't afford to taking that pawn on f5. Can't take it. So king tries to centralize itself because we know another principle. Towards the end of the game, you would prefer having the king closer to the center, especially after the pieces come off the board. Now, black took here. Rook gets onto f1, threatening the same problematic square for black, which is like the eternal f7, the ever problematic square uh, f7. And for white would be the f2 um, uh, in compensation. So e3 now comes down the board, attacking the queen. Queen moves on to f7, but that is the only check white can give. The only check. Because after black plays king to uh, h8, there is no more check that might happen. There's just nothing that might happen here. And of course now, if you want to do this kind of things, queen's going to take, and after rook captures, again, the same very serious issue with rook coming on a1. Very, very deadly move. So you can't afford doing that. Therefore, queen tries to attack the rook, but now c6, another super, super uh, great idea played by Rubinstein. Queen takes, and rook now attacks with tempo again. Queen goes in the center, the other pawn comes down the board or up the board, depends how you look at it. A rook tries to stave off a bit the uh, pawn and now another brilliancy here. d5 being played. The idea is if y queen were to capture on d5, disaster again, we've got queen to e3 checking, king goes on h1, bishop f3, disaster. Forking the king, checking the king, and the queen. Again, incredibly bad. So white had to take on d5. Now you can see why c6 was being considered a super great move. And now the last brilliancy here, very attacking move, rook to c1. And simply nothing to do with white here. George Allen Thomas resigns at this point because if they were to capture, probably you could envisage it, guys. Queen takes on c1 checks. There is just nothing good here. King to f2. Actually, let me just do this. So just to have it a very, very clear picture. Uh, look at this. What do they play? King to f2. What do we do? King to f1. And after e3, we got a checkmate coming straight away. Queen to e1. Check and mate. Brilliant positional and brilliant tactics from Akiba Rubinstein versus George Allen Thomas in 1922 Hastings, England. Uh, we're going to do many more evergreen eternal games, people, in various openings lines, various openings. And um, I thank you again, guys, for being here with me. Subscribe if that's useful or enjoyable to some degree. And I'll see you with more chess videos. Thank you.